Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night and that you'll enjoy the video and thank you so much for watching. The fact that you aren't asking for a lot is not a flex. Pick me girls and girls who are desperate to be chosen and to be loved and to be liked and to be cherished often are scared to ask for what they want and are scared to ask for too much and kind of feel proud of not asking for a lot because they feel like it's better. I want to tell you that the fact that you aren't asking for what you actually want and the fact that you're not asking for a lot will attract men who are going to do the bare minimum and who are going to accept that you aren't asking for that much and so they're just going to do low maintenance things to keep you i want you to really acknowledge and really put aside the conditioning around being silent around not asking for anything around fawning over men when we talk about feminine energy and being in your feminine it doesn't mean to not voice your opinions it doesn't mean to not show your needs it doesn't mean that you just shut the and stay pretty that is not what being in your feminine is so get clear on what you want get clear on your needs get clear on how you want to be treated treat yourself that way first give yourself all those things first and watch how the men that you choose or attract shift trust me it all starts with you it really does of course it does me i always trust someone just because they say trust me in the meantime the one that you call pick me girls they're in a relationship they live with their boyfriends or husbands and they live their lives exactly the way they want to you keep asking them to trust you while sitting alone in your car maybe they're happy with what you call the bare minimum maybe they're happy with a small gesture maybe they're happy whenever their boyfriends come home with a bottle of wine in one hand and flowers in the other maybe they're happy whenever their boyfriend or husband says you know what get dressed we're going out we're gonna have a pizza we're gonna go eat at some restaurant we're gonna have a good time maybe they're happy with their boyfriends or husbands saying don't worry about the bills i got those you go get your nails done oh but that's the bare minimum they should trust me <laughs> i can hear them laughing already not to brag or anything but i do already have my sweatpants picked out for new year's eve where i'll be sitting on the couch watching the ball drop I'm booked for the night. All right, living the best life, aren't you? Well, you have fun then. Just don't forget to get some mistletoe and kiss yourself in the mirror at midnight. So I have a question for all the hot single men out there. Where are you? No, seriously, where are you? Because you're not out at the weekends. You're not in some quaint little coffee shop reading a book being all mysterious. You're not on Hinge or Bumble. You are certainly not on Tinder. So where are you? Where is your location? My phone has never been so dry. Like, do you all just group together and go live in some far off island in the middle of nowhere? It would make sense by this point. I could not tell you the last time I met a guy who was really attractive funny, had the personality of more than a f***ing teaspoon. So where are you? Help a gal out this festive season. Drop your location. I can't be the only single gal feeling this way. There's not even options at this point. So please, do us a favor. Let us know where you are. Thanks, hon. Ah, where are the hot and single men? Well, I don't count as one, but I can still probably answer that question for you. They're far away from you. They're wherever you're not looking. They are where you was 10 years ago, saying no to girls like you. You remember those days, right? When you used to say no to those men that you're looking for today? Help a girl like you out? Do a girl like you a favor? <laughs> Why? Why should they do a girl like you a favor when you're the type of girl they're staying away from? Because you exist and you feel entitled to their time? Nah, you're gonna have to come up with something better than that here's why you shouldn't give a man your body 
for free. Historically and traditionally, women would not have sex with men until marriage. Marriage is a legal binding and obligation for the man to take care of the woman and his possible future family. It was set up this way because people innately understood that when a woman gives her body to a man, she's giving up something. So naturally, the man must give something back. Modern ways of thinking tell us that women are not only equal to men, but the same as men. So we should have as many intimate partners as we want without any obligations like our male counterparts want us to. Let's really look at that. Who's that serving here? We went from holding out until the man makes a lifelong commitment to support us, to us getting on apps like Bumble or Hinge, even Ubering ourselves to the hookup and leave us with nothing but the memory of a cringe encounter. And my voice here is not to shame women that have before marriage or casual. My argument is that we shouldn't forget that we're giving our bodies to these men for nothing when we once got everything for it. Do y'all see what I'm seeing here? Nah, probably not, because what I'm seeing here is that the hardworking girls on the corner are actually smarter than you. At least they get something in return for their body. Or is that what you're promoting? Is that what you're asking? That will make sense, because girls like you don't get married anymore. And when you're saying historical times, how back in history are we gonna go? Back when a Neanderthal like me will bang you in the head with a club, drag you into my cave and make an honest woman out of you? Or are we going back into more terrible times when you used to cook and clean? and not felt it was so degrading to you whenever another adult came home and gave you his paycheck. Either way, who cares? Go ahead and ask something in return for your body. We even have a name for that. But that name, it's not wife. I have this theory that when you break up with each other and the first thing that the woman will do is go and canoodle with the guy's friends, thinking that she's going to make him jealous and upset, but really, it is the best way to help him move on. It is the best way to remind him that he does not care for you and that you are trash. No, I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding. And this one is going to hurt. This one's going to hurt, I think. Um, but what that will do is hurt his feelings for about a nanosecond. And then he will continue eating his hot flaming Cheeto puffs on the couch while playing Call of Duty. Um, that's just my theory, though. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty good theory. It's actually so good it should be taught in schools in the gender study classes. I don't see that happening because apparently we need to promote more of a 304 lifestyle. But hey, a man can still dream, right? But I actually was broke and I didn't have a lot of money when I was racing. Uh -huh. And so I used to go on Tinder dates all the time. Like I'd finish work and I'd go out for lunch and then I'd go on another date at dinner so I didn't have to pay for lunch or dinner. That's so So right. I would have these guys fund my groceries basically because yeah. I didn't want to afford. So all my house, all I had to have was oats in the morning and then I knew that most of the time I was going to get lunch or dinner. And there you go, straight from the horse's mouth. Is that how that saying goes? But I actually think we do need more women like her. <laughs> Don't hate me just yet, let me explain. The more they come out and tell us how they play men, the more we can learn. That's why if you're still dating, you should go for coffee dates. If you say coffee and they say no, then you know you were being played for food. And there's nothing wrong with grabbing something to eat. But you can start with a coffee date and if everything goes well, you can change location, go grab a pizza or go to a restaurant. But even in that case, you still dictate the terms of the date. You're not just being played and used for a free meal. Why are people confused about this? It really takes so little effort to text your partner when you're out and just let them know how you're doing every once in a while. You're not asking for a play-by-play -play of every decision that you make before you make it. Literally just a couple words every 30 to 40 minutes. Change bars, we're here now. It's not needy, it's not controlling, it's just healthy communication. No, it's not. And I bet it's controlling whenever your men ask you to text him every 30 or 40 minutes. I'm not texting anyone when I'm out because I'm not on my phone when I'm out. My phone is in my pocket the whole time. I'm going to text you, I'm here when I get to the bar and you can forget about me for the next two hours. And that was never a problem in my relationships. And that was a conversation that never came out in any of my relationships. Maybe I got lucky and maybe they trusted me whenever I was out. I'm not going to do anything else than just enjoy some time with my friends. But I'm actually curious about how you guys feel about all that do you text your partners when you're out let me know if you're in a relationship and you want to avoid some of the most common arguments that couples have after moving in that eventually cause them to break up you and your partner should probably have this conversation after living together for a bit one of the big problems couples face is that they spend too much time with each other and lose their sense of individuality or they don't spend enough quality time together and they lose the spark and romance in the relationship so to avoid that talk about how much quality time you expect to generally spend together on weekdays and weeknights and more importantly how you want to balance that with alone time 
And this right here is why I can't take any of these TikTokers seriously. Obviously, they're all experts, but even still, I just can't. If you're living together, you're gonna spend the weeknights and the weekends together. That's pretty obvious. And since you say it's important to get some of that alone time, that's why I'm gonna be at the bar for a couple of hours with my friends, enjoying a few drinks and not texting you every 30 or 40 minutes. But again, that's just me. Let me know what you guys think. I despise the fact that there are men out there that feel special because I was down bad about them. Because the thing is, I could romanticize a literal piece of sh A literal turd. If I had a fun day with a literal turd, I would think about it forever. And every time I like walked past where I saw it on the sidewalk, I'd be like, oh my god, that's where I saw the turd for the first time. You're not special! I'm stupid! Now, that's something we can both agree on. And I know you all feel the need to tell us who you're dating, but sometimes just keep it a secret. Keep some mystery. And yeah, I get it, it's convenient. You can just put it in your purse when you're done dating. But still, let's have some mystery. Imagine telling me for six years that I need therapy because I'm too sensitive, I overreact, I'm too depressed and anxious, everything's always my fault in every argument that we've ever had. You're never wrong, I'm always wrong, I have issues, I need therapy. I go to therapy and my therapist tells me I'm being mentally abused. And she's like, uh, you're being infantilized and uh, gaslit. And uh, this is what happens when someone is being mentally abused. They fall into depression, substance abuse, they gain weight, all these things. And um, 10 weeks ago, I'm writing notes, taking therapy every single week, religiously, and I work up the strength to finally leave your ass. Good, absolutely. But I hope you realize that you basically prove him right. He told you for six years you needed therapy, obviously you did. And somehow you and your therapist, what big surprise there, she's a woman, managed to blame him for your issues. One thing I know for sure is I'm not gonna feel sorry for the guy. I'm actually happy for him. Men always try to spin the block on me when they realize that I wasn't the problem. And then I'm just like, uh uh. Uh uh. Remember that thing you said? I was toxic? Yeah. Mm hmm. Nah, obviously you're not the problem. I always trust someone and think highly of someone that records herself while sitting on a toilet. How can you ever be the problem? Yeah, and another thing I've noticed, all of your exes, all of you have an ex that is a narcissist. That's always the go-to because that's what's cool today. It can never be you, obviously. It was just that he was a narcissist. What is one secret you never told your ex? That I hooked up with someone else. I cheated. <laughs> Um, I cheated. I cheated. <laughs> Jesus. This is crazy. How many times did you cheat? Four. Four. How many different dudes? Three. Yeah, there you go. Ask them and every single one of them will tell you that they did it because their ex was a narcissist. And for you young dudes out there, I feel for you. But anyway, this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.